Hello there. We've now gone from no deal to let's talk a bit more to we might have a deal by mid-November. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. The Brexit roller coaster does seem endless, doesn't it? And getting bumpier by the day. Just 10 days ago, Brexiteers were celebrating that Boris had called No Deal Brexit unless there was a fundamental shift on the EU side. But after a couple of throwaway lines from Brussels about compromise, we're now shackled to the negotiating table once again. And the mutterings are that if we stick at it, there might be a deal by mid-November. But the warnings are all still there about the vast chasm between the two negotiating positions. How many times have the terms fisheries, level playing fields, governance and state aid been banded about? It seems to me that the two sides are about a 100 miles apart, but every time each side moves an inch closer, it's being hailed as some sort of monumental milestone. And as a result, it looks like we're now going to have to wait until mid-November before we get a decision. And I would bet the decision would be, we need to talk some more and come to a deal by Christmas. Now I know it's being claimed that this isn't the case, but the only message this puts out from Downing Street is that Boris won't allow a no-deal Brexit. That means Brussels thinks it can sit back and wait for the big cave-in. As I said yesterday, the longer this prevarication continues, the more relaxed Brussels will get. The more times a potential buyer views the same house, the more the estate agent knows they're on the hook, so the less chance of the buyer beating the price down. And that seems to me to be where we are. The UK government that keeps going back to Brussels to look at the same deal. One person showing optimism is the Irish Deputy Prime Minister Leo Varadkar, who told RTE yesterday that I am confident there will be a deal. It's by no means guaranteed, but I think on the balance of probabilities it will be possible to agree a free trade agreement with the UK. The trouble is that for the EU27, a so-called free trade deal with the UK consists of the UK having to pay for it by handing over our fish, Northern Ireland and control over our laws and future. And I'm sure that Varadkar is hoping for something along those very lines. But we are getting some very mixed messages out of France at the moment. One minute the French President Emmanuel Macron is sticking steadfastly to his fishing red lines of total access to UK waters, and the next we have his Europe Minister, Clement Bone, saying that this is all just France playing the Brexit bad cop. The Europeans need to be really tough. The President has always been on the front line. We have always been accused of being, to use the English phrase, the bad cop, he told Radio J. We take full responsibility for that because Brexit is an economic and political challenge. If you think you can have your cake and eat it, Europe is meaningless. The Europeans need to learn to rediscover the concept of the balance of power, including with its friends and partners, including with the UK. But he is another who believes that a deal could be struck in the next two or three weeks. Although again, I think the French envisage the EU having control over a colonised UK. There is also talk that the French and Spanish fishing communities could band together to blockade EU ports to prevent UK fish being imported into the single market. This talk stems from worries by the UK fishing community that retaliatory hold-ups at ports would make their trade with the EU countries impossible. For example, the managing director of Loch Fine Sea Farms, Jamie McMillan, told The Express, It's on a knife edge. It could go either way. There's possibly going to be customs delays. 
If the French and Spanish fishermen don't get what they want out of this deal, then I believe there won't be any access to Europe. The French and Spanish fishermen will blockade access into Europe if they don't get what they want. Nobody wants to buy dead shellfish, do they? It's high-end premium products that we export. Live langoustines, lobsters, brown crabs. We need the fastest possible route into Europe, and the only way is through the tunnel. If there are... If there are any problems like there was a couple of years ago when there were immigrants trying to get through the tunnel and there were huge delays, it could mean we miss the transport in France and our goods arrive 24 hours later. Now I'm hoping that such worries are unfounded because such a move by the EU fishing community would be an EU declaration of economic war on the UK. And as an aside, I wonder how many of the UK pro-EU lobby will be trying to get across the channel to join in with the anti-UK action. If it wasn't for the pandemic, quite a few I would reckon. But such action would presumably also snarl up cross-border trade for everyone else. So I don't see EU authorities just standing around and watching. Anyway, back to the talks. Euractive.com appears to be a bit more realistic and is reporting that a deal is not yet in sight. And it quotes one senior European official as saying, The negotiations are progressing, but we are still a long way off. And looking at it from the EU perspective, the report goes on to say, But neither side has budged on the issues that still divide them such as level playing field provisions to ensure Britain does not try to retreat from the EU's environmental or labour standards, state subsidies and how to arbitrate future differences. I.e. how to keep the UK under the Brussels thumb. They also need to resolve the question of access to British fishing waters by EU vessels. We've already done that the UK takes back full control of its own exclusive economic zone on the 1st of January. Brussels is prepared to offer London a zero tariffs, zero quotas deal for access to the EU market, better than the deal offered Canada, but only if Britain is prepared to accept EU standards and regulations. That's not a deal, that's EU vassalage. And all of that is precisely what the UK has rejected time and time again. So why people are still talking about it as a possibility is beyond me. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.